Okay, without further ado, uh, one clearly uh, substandard area, if you will, of the Linux networking uh, architecture is that we really don't handle queues in a nice way. It's been uh, basically, people have been implementing things as needed inside the drivers with minimal true abstractions in the core kernel for this purpose. Uh, so Magnus and company are gonna try to help uh, spur an uh, effort to fix this problem, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what they have to say. Thank you, Dave. So I'm Magnus Carlson. I'm gonna talk about the new proposal here for exposing networking queues to user space in a new API. And if only Björn and I from Intel would have been presenting this, uh, the probability of this getting accepted by other vendors and the community is probably very close to zero. So I'm really happy that there are actually three other networking vendors cooperating with this. So there are representatives of uh, Jacob from Netronome and we have Maxim there from Mellanox and I don't know if Andy actually left the room or, oh, he's there, good, he's in the front room. So that's very, you know, that's good. Uh, and also to round it off and to make our, you know, to get us stop fighting and just, you know, Sanity checking our stuff. We also have two Danes here in Red Hats, Toke and, and, and Jesper. Okay, so just first, this is really work in progress. What we're gonna hear now is just a snapshot, a dump of where we are now. So you hear about the things we agree on. You also hear about things we do not agree on and you know problems that we haven't solved. So it will be just a dump of where we are. It's definitely not finished in any way. And no, that guy is not shoveling garbage, so. Somebody asked that before. Uh, okay, so you all know this, you know. And it has a couple of ports. You have an you know, optical alliance or something like that, that goes in there. And, you know, all your traffic goes in and out of those ports. And then up towards the, the driver, the software interface, and it provides usually queues. And these are, you know, receive queues for receiving traffic and you know, transmit queues for transmitting traffic out to these ports. And there are one or more queues that are used. And who are the users of this in the kernel? Well, the most obvious user is the Linux stack itself. And if you look at most drivers, they seem to be, you know, allocating one RX and one TX queue per core that you have in your system for scalability reasons. This is probably not true for all drivers, but if I look at the new ones, that seems to be the case. And this can be seen in, in user space. There's a you know, SysFS file system thing for this and also ETH tool can man mani manipulate them. But there are also a lot of users in the kernel that you don't see from user space. For example, XDPTX and XDP redirect uh, uses extra queues, extra TX queues in this case. And you don't see that from user space. It's also that AFXDP can use extra queues depending on the implementation. For example, in the Intel implementation, we actually reuse the ones from XDPTX and the ones, but Mellanox has another implementation. And it's, it's just up to you, whatever you want to do. So these can be hidden too. And, you know, QDisk with hardware offloads might be new ones. And there's probably a number of other uses that I don't know of and have forgotten here that might use queues, networking queues, and do not expose this to user space in any way. So having hidden queues is perfectly fine. You know, it's uh, operating system is about abstracting hardware things. Unfortunately, there are user space tools and APIs that want to use queues. And that's where the problem comes in. For example, first perpetrator here is AFXTP. In the AFXTP bind call, you bind to a network or an interface and a specific queue. The queue you want to get the traffic from or send the traffic to. So it really needs, you know, a specific queue ID. So what queue should you use? Well, in order to uh, know that, you have to know what driver you're using, read the driver, and then you have to input this in some formula. That means, you know, how many cores do I have? What other options in my system are, am I doing? Do I'm doing F F XDPTX at the same time? Do I have any queue di disk with hardware flow, blah, blah, blah? And you get a formula, and that's not a very nice user interface. I mean, so, and it, this also might depend on the version of the driver you're using and, and so on and so forth. So, not very good. We also have ETH tool. ETH tool is a user. It has a number of different ways of, of uh, using queues. Uh, and also, of course, uh, in the SysFS, you have uh, this uh, sysclassnet, your device name, queues, RX, 
tx, and you can see the queues used by the Linux stack there. And you can do some, get some statistics from them and so on. But it's only the ones from the Linux networking stack. So the problem here then is that, okay, what queue ID should I actually provide here? What queues should I actually manip manipulate? Let's say I, I have a new queue here that, that was you know, created under the hood of me, and I would do something with these two. What queue ID does it have? I don't know, unless I study the driver. So that's the problem. We want some way of actually knowing what queues are in use, getting an ID of them, you know, so I can input that into tools and also be able to allocate and free queues because especially AFXTP, it needs new queues that you can route your traffic to so it doesn't disturb the Linux networking stack or anything else that happens to be using these queues. Okay, so the outline here then, I, I just start with a problem scoping and then I'm gonna define what we say is a queue in this interface. And then, you know, propose an interface and then go through some usage examples. Uh, and then a design proposal and an implementation plan because this will not be implemented in, you know, one patch. It will be a number of steps. And then challenges and open questions at the end. Okay, so first just to be able to frame the problem. So we're talking about exactly the same thing. Here's some very basic, you know, Q hardware basics. And of course, every single NIC doesn't do it in the same way. But you start up with having a number of Qs, a number of PFs, a number of VFs. And then there's some partitioning magic happening. It could be static, could be dynamic, depending on NIC. You end up with some configuration. In this case, you have a PF with 64 Qs and two VFs with 16 Qs each. But you can also have other configurations, like you can have a PF that has VFs in itself. So in this case, uh, took that 64 Q PF and you gave 16 of those queues to the VF, you know, and the PF still has 48 queues. If you just look at that 48 queues and the PF, once you decide that, okay, this is something I want to use in Linux, you create a net dev, or you get in the net dev abstraction of this PF, and that net dev then has 48 queues allocated to it. And then you can use these queues for various things. In this example, it's used for the Linux stack, it's used for an XTP app, because it uses XTP redirect, for example, and maybe an AFXTP app. And there really are two problems here. The first problem on the top row is like splitting up queues between PFs and VFs in a device. And the second problem is basically the second row is allocating and freeing queues within a net dev. So we're only gonna look at the second problem. So given a net dev and a set of queues, how do I do resource management of those queues within that net dev? The first problem is very interesting too. You know, and it seems to be some, you know, something on the dev link level, but it seems that all NIC vendors are doing this in a very different way. So just to make the problem tractable and to make forward progress, we just focus on the uh, latter problem here because that also solves some, some of our problems, not all of them, but some, you know. Okay, so what's a queue in our uh, definition? So it's unidirectional, it's either Rx, or TX, but not both at the same time. It's tied to a hardware device, or more specifically, as you say, it's tied to a net dev, because, I mean, there are, there are virtual devices too, so. But really, it's tied to one net dev. And it's referenced by IF index and QID, that tuple. And the QID will be unique within a device. There's no two queues within a net dev that has the same ID. But between net devs, they might have some idea. But it's always this tuple that refers to it. Uh, a queue belongs to a single net dev. And because a net dev belongs to a single namespace, a queue belongs to a single namespace too. And we always refer to a real hardware queue. If it's a, of course, if it's a hardware device for a physical device. If it's a virtual device, we do not have a magical wand that will turn virtual queues into hardware queues. And of course, they are virtual. But for a hardware device, the queues should be real, they should be hardware queues. And the queue ID is completely opaque in user space. We cannot make any assumptions what the queue IDs uh, should be. And we'll actually have one violation of this rule for compatibility reasons, but we'll get to that later. But the, any, any new user of this interface should think that queue ID, opaque. Don't make any assumptions, could be anything. So just to, go through the interface process on a very high level. We'll go into some more details later. Uh, 
we're proposing to make a Netlink interface and the five primary operations here is going to be, first of all, a command to be able to list all queues for a specific uh, interface. So get a list of everything that's being used at this point in time. Uh, we'll go into some more details about this. Then there will be uh, one command for allocating a queue. So give me a new queue, something that has not been used before. And you get an identifier to that. We'll look into more details about that. And then you can be able to get attributes of this queue and to be able to set some attributes of this queue, not all of them, but some of them. And of course, at the end, you can also free a queue to give it back to the net dev so somebody else could get it. And if we look a little bit more detail now in, in the various commands, so what does an allocation look like? So what can I actually allocate? So a W in front of the parameter here means that it's, it's data that's written, so it's input data, something I write from the user space and it goes in. And R means it's read, it's output data. And if it's R, W, it's both input and output data. So the first thing I need to give this is an interface, interface index. So interface, this queue should be allocated from. That's the first thing. And then it's an optional name for this queue. It could be good to have names for them so you know what they're used for. You know? uh, and then I have a, another field called uh, uh, interrupt or IIQ. If you don't provide anything here, so you leave it blank, you will associate this queue with an unused IIQ, if possible, and return the IIQ number in the same field. So you get exactly, okay, I tied it to this IIQ and it was not used. But if you provide an entry here, you will associate, associate this queue with this, uh, this interrupt. So we'll be triggered by this interrupt. And the fourth option is, uh, or the fourth parameter is type. So you have to specify, is, should it be a TX queue or an RX queue? Not both, just one of them. And this function returns a queue ID, this uh, opaque uh, entity that you can use in, in user space then. And of course, there's an error field too, when you, you can't allocate something. If you look at the list command, uh, same here, you, you provide an interface index again, saying that I'm interested in the queues of this net dev. And then you have another variable. It's either that you have to uh, input, it's either name, QID or IQ. So you can search by name or a QID or a specific interrupt, or if you have it blank, you know, you will show any queue that's been allocated on the device or used on the device. And then it returns you on know, the name, the QID, the IQ, so all the attributes of a queue, you know, of all the queues that you actually match your search criteria. That's the whole point. So here you can, you know, get to know what, what you're actually using on, on the device and get some filtering too. Because it might be, as you see uh, a little bit later, it's good to know, for example, all queues tied to a specific area queue, so you know which one will trigger at the same time. So, uh, so it just gets you through some examples. So how, how could this possibly be used from, from user space? Uh, so let's say you have AFXCP first. We'll go through three different examples. What if I want to allocate a queue pair, and it should be affinitized to a specific core, and then I want to bind an AFXCP socket to this? So what would I do then? And this is just, you know, very simplified pseudocode, of course. I would first allocate a queue on interface index one and give it the name of the RX queue. And it will return a queue ID and an interrupt to me. So, uh, you know, the queue ID is it's this opaque entity I can refer to the handle and it tell me, okay, I found this RQ channel. It was not used by anything else here. This is the RQ. And then I do another allocation and with this allocation, I feed in the same interfix in, in index, the name of it, you know, whatever I want to call it. And then I say this is a TX uh, queue, and I give it also the ARIA queue of, that I got back from the first allocation. So I tie this RX and TX to the same ARIA queue. Yes, if you pass, can somebody pass the mic there? So it seems like that's too late to get NUMA allocation of memory for the receive queue, correct? That's a good question. I mean, so that's, yeah, that's a really good question. So you want to you know exactly when, you don't want to be able to have it allocated on the same, same node. Yeah, that's a good I mean, good I, point. Yeah. it seems like when you allocate the queue, you need to know what node you're doing it on. So I, either that should be a parameter to the allocation yeah. or? Yeah, that's good. That's great. 
And then you, you would, for example, to do the affinity, you would then take the interrupt that you got back and feed it into the you know, proc file system and you know, affinitize that interrupt at, at some point. And then you bind it. You know, and of course, this bind option doesn't exist at this point. I mean, at this point, you give bind AFXP a file descriptor, an interface, and the queue ID. And it's actually the queue ID of the RX queue. And in this case, if you actually had a queue ID of the RX and a queue ID of the TX, you would also have the second option there to provide the queue ID of the TX. And of course, I mean, this, the, the previous option of just giving the queue ID of RX would still work. It would just you know, be like today. You would get the TX queue picked. You know, just, it would just pick a, a, a queue ID from you, and that's it. So, or pick a TX queue for you. you know. But if you want to specify both RX and, and TX queue, the interface today needs to be extended. So. And if we look at East tool, East tool today uses uh, queues in various ways. It has this concept called channels. And so all queues tied to the same uh, interrupt is forming a channel according to the East tool uh, uh, definition. And they're numbered zero to the real number of the you know, RX or TX queues minus one that you have. So they have a specific numbering too. But the problem here is that, okay, this API produces two QIDs that are opaque, you know, so how can we actually deal with this? So maybe we should violate this, you know, opaqueness a little bit here and say, okay, can we give the Linux uh, stack RX queues always have, you know, QID zero to real number of QIDs uh, minus one? So they always have that. So if somebody has a program saying that, okay, I'm going to set, uh, you know, some parameter of, of QID number zero, you know, in East tool, it just hard coded zero. It always will mean the same thing, even in this case. If East tool would use an interface like this, uh, and how would this look inside East tool? Well, East tool would look up the IQ of of the supply, uh, supplied QID, and then list all queues using that IQ, and then you get all the the queues using that IQ, and you can form a channel of that. So if there's, you get one RX queue, one TX queue, you know, okay, that's a combined channel, tick, you know. And if it's, you get one RX queue back, oh, it's an RX channel. And then you can count things like that. Of course, that interface, you know, internally will be more uh, convoluted because it has to do two calls. I guess today it's, I, I don't know the octal interface of each tool, but I guess it's one, one call. But now it will be a little bit more complicated. Uh, but of course, I don't know about, I mean, I. East tool has proposed using a Netlink interface. Does it have an interface today of this? Not yet. And Not yet. I okay. don't want to add new things to East tool until the uh, Netlink thing conversion is complete. Right, right. Yeah, because you don't want to have a Netlink interface proposed for this. I mean, we could also look in and do using that, of course. So. Uh, there's one problem here also. I mean, what do you do if you have a TX only channel? I'm saying that only the RX QID should be zero to number of RX queues minus one. But what if you have a TX only channel? How do you look it up? I don't have a good, good solution for that. And I don't know if TX only channels exist for you know, the stuff that this tool, uh, tool manages. I don't know. If anybody knows, please, please let me know. I haven't seen those, but I only have a few cards. So. OK, so Toke, want to take this one? started discussing this, like you guys started up with AFXTP and trying to solve the, um, the interface for that. And then Jesper and I were like, wait a minute, we have another problem where we have a really bad interface to queues, and that's XTP redirect. Your microphone's off. Is, is, is it off? No, it's, it's on the sound wave. Is it off? Oh, the guy left. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Okay, I'll try again. So uh, we started discussing this uh, in uh, the context of AFXTP. Now it's on. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, and then Jasper and I realized, oh, we have another issue where when you do HTTP redirect, how many of you have tried doing HTTP redirect and the packets just magically disappear into the ether? <laughs> yes, so part of this is because um, we don't have an interface to allocate resources for uh, HTTP redirect on the egress side. 
And so drivers just do random things. So for example, Intel drivers will, when you load an RX interface, uh, RX HTTP program onto an interface, it will also allocate TX queues. Um, so that means that if you look at the example program for HTTP redirect in the kernel source, it will load an empty HTTP program on the target interface that you're redirecting to, because otherwise there will be no TX queues in that interface and your packets are just getting dropped. Mellanox cards do something different, and it's also tied to the number of CPUs. So if you have more CPUs than you have, than you have hardware queues in your device, you're just not going to get packets through. Um, and so obviously that's not a good situation for HTTP redirect. And so now we, we're, if we are defining this, um, and as you can see from the slide, there's details to be ironed out, note, work in progress, we should have more of the little guys that are digging uh, on this. But if we have the interface now to define queues, we could also use this for redirect. Um, because then you can actually go and allocate, okay, I want to redirect out of this interface. And now we have a netlink interface to say, I would like to have allocated some queues that I can use for redirect targets. But we also need to figure out how do we then define this redirect target. So I think we had basically we discussed two ways to do it. One is that this is becomes a um, global property of the interface that says if this right now would you do redirect the target of the redirect is an interface name or if index. And so either we could say okay we have a global property new configuration interface to configure this interface. So how do you want to choose? Or, and this is what is on this slide, we have the net, netlink command queue alloc. We get a new TX queue. And then we define a, a new map type. Um, instead of a dev map, we now have a queue map. And so we define the struct queue target where you put in one, or you can see that's an array. This is not, this does not compile. Um, it's pseudo code. <laughs> Um, but you put in one or more queues in this start, and you put in a mode. So in this case, we're just putting in one queue and say it's a single queue thing. So we only want to use one queue because we're using all the others for our AFXTP target, but we want to be able to redirect out of it, and we're not going to do so much. So it's a single queue, okay, so it's probably a lock somewhere because it's coming from all different CPUs, and we want to use the single queue. Or you could do mode is queue a mod CPU number, so you just do round robin to the number, or you can do Q hash, or you can do what we have today, it's just mode CPU ID, where you then assume that you're only ever going to see the packet on the CPU, and that would be the nice, fast, lockless version. And so we use the device map, uh, which is now a Q map, as the configuration interface for this. So depending on what you put into that, you can then have um, each entry in the map, which becomes the target of your BPF redirect map call down here, um, then implicitly contains the queue configuration. That also means you can have a fast path and a slow path. So your PPF program could figure out, am I on a CPU that's configured for fast transmit? Because that's the normal case. Cool, I'll just do the lockless thing. Oh no, I'm on the slow fallback because this came in on the other CPU or whatever, okay, I have another interface that's the same I have indexed, but it's a different queue configuration, so it will take a lock and it'll be a bit slower. You can do all these kinds of stuff because you have a, the map structure to use it, and there's a bit of precedence for this because we already you do all these weird tricks in the redirect map uh, that uh, Jesper put in the bulking and so on, which is also the reason why the redirect map help is way faster than the redirect help. Don't use XTP redirect, always use XTP redirect map it's faster. Uh, so we already have, like, we're already using this map structure to do all kinds of weird stuff. So if we just go on this, and so once we go further down, we can also put a packet queue in here, and we can do all these kinds of configuration where if we actually want to um, extend the capabilities of XTP redirect. So that's also part of, of this, and we'll figure out the details as we go along. Questions? You get questions afterwards. Okay. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to finish. <laughs> All right? You hear me now? Okay. So just a you know, short uh, kernel design overview. We'll get into an implementation plan just after this, how, how to break this down in you know, chunks that seem to be tractable at this point in time, at least. <laughs> so what we want to implement is some kind of queue manager. Uh, this is uh, you know, a, 
a word we don't really like, queue manager, but that's the best one we can come up with. If you have a better name of this, uh, please let me know. But it's an entity, a new entity in the system that can actually allocate in free queues and, you know, keep track of uh, all the queues, you know, as, as, a, re as a resource. Uh, so there's a number of, of uses of this. There will be a number of uses of this inside uh, the kernel, for example, the Linux stack or XDP that can ask this, you know, at some point in time, ask this to allocate a queue or uh, register something. And it's also, of course, user space through this Netlink interface. So if user space says allocate a queue, it will go down to this queue manager. But, but the actual allocation, of course, of the queue will be done by the device driver. So there will be a new interface between the device driver and the queue manager where, you know, that you can allocate the free, free a queue. Uh, but as you'll see, I mean, it's, it's, it's really not possible to implement this straight away. So what we'll do, we can't take every single device and just change them. It doesn't work. So we really have to do this in, in another way. We have to plug it in, you know, very, very incrementally without any modifications to the device driver. And let me see here. So the implementation time is we, we do something like this. We start with a Netlink interface. And there's a, you know, parenthesis, sysfs. We'll get to that in the next slide. Somebody wants this, but let's start with a Netlink interface and implement this queue manager module in the kernel that tips cacks of these queues and allocations and deallocations. And the first goal should just be to be able to show Linux stack queues in this Netlink interface. And the way we'll do that is just we'll plug ourselves into the netif alloc netdev queues and alloc rx queues because I mean the driver will tell us how many we have. And we'll just plug us in there and we don't need to modify the drivers. Uh, so when we get to that point, we can say, oh, we can show exactly the same thing as you can see today. But I think that's, you know, some progress. And then we add these uh, TX queues and we populate them too so you can actually see them. Uh, and maybe other things like, you know, QDisk, MQ Pre, hardware flow, the queues. I don't know. We'll see if we get to that. But I mean, so we can get all the queues and you can just see things. You cannot allocate or free anything. You can just see what's used. That's the first goal. And then comes the more complicated things. And then we actually need to start allocating and freeing queues. And that means we actually have to implement new NDOs in the drivers. And you know, drivers today are, I mean, at least maybe there are drivers today that are written with that can allocate and free queues on, on demand, you know, very dynamically. But most of the drivers do not, are not written like that today. It's more like if you want to add something, you just, you know, reset it, rebuild everything, and go to that. You could start with NetDev soon. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's going to be uh, a lot of work. We will start just, yeah, a single driver and, and start with that. And then we need, you know, at least for AFXP, we need libbpf helpers for creating a new socket and tie it to a new dedicated AFXP, you know, and, yeah, allocating the memory in the right new man order and everything that we need to do in order for this to work and make it simple for people to use. We we'll need to do that. And then also update the... XDP SOC app to use this, you know, as an example. And we also need IP Route 2 support for queue manipulation. You probably need, you know, command line support to be able to allocate and free and list, mm -hmm. list queues there. And then get to the point where we update all three drivers currently supporting AFXDP zero copy and say, okay, these, at least these three drivers can be using this, these new NDOs. And then there's some pipe dreams at the end. That's why, I mean, actually, all, at least the two last ones there. Uh, it seemed to be a nice thing to be able to move queue creation policy outside the driver. Now all queue creation policies are inside the driver. And uh, I have not checked every single driver, so I'm probably completely wrong, but it seems like the XDP TX, most people allocate extra TX queues. And uh, mm -hmm. at least for modern devices, it seems that most of them allocate a, queue, a, a RX and a TX queue per core for the Linux NetDev stack, but that's probably, you know, there's probably exceptions to that rule for sure. Uh, yeah. But okay. it would be nice to get the policy, policy outside, but it might be pipe dream, as I say, we might never get there. Also somewhere in the middle there, the new, new map type for redirect. I yeah. could probably yeah. Yeah. halfway. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, challenges, open questions. Well, one challenge was really good, was the NUMA one. We need to specifically consider that we forgot about that so that's great feedback and that's why we're here we want to you know see where does it break you know what have we forgotten so that's a great comment uh, we have interactions with changing the number of queues in east tool for example how do we deal with that uh, 
Do we say that this space, real number of TXRs, queues is like a reserved space? We never allocate anything from them. And ETH tool just works as before. You can scale it up and down, for example. Well, it, since we have a 32-bit value, we have a large space to carve something like that out. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And that's actually something I, I forgot to tell. I mean, the QID space internally inside the kernel, we're going to have types. So we're going to carve out that you know, entity into different types of queues. So maybe, maybe you should use a U64. <laughs> yes, we're going to use 64. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't want to make it UAPI, yeah. the type thing. I see. No, so from, from the user space point of view, it's just opaque. But internally, I mean, to make implementations in the drivers easier, we can code, you know, a XDP, TX being a certain type. So you know what kind of, you know, setup you should have on that queue and, and so on and so forth. So, but from user space, it should always be opaque. You should just not, you know, so we can experiment and change things inside the kernel. Uh, second question is, can ETH tool use this interface, you know? Is that something we add to ETH tool that can use it? Or do we use ETH tools one? We say there's not none so far, but it would be great if we just use one instead of two. Uh, uh, and do we also need a SysFS interface? I mean, some people say, yeah, we need a Sys inter interface. As, like we have one, Sys class net dev queues, you know, RXN, TXN. There's some information there. Do we expose just read-only information in the SysFS interface? So you can see the queues there, but you can't manipulate them. To manipulate them, you go to Netlink. I think we should stay to Netlink for changes. Sorry? I think we should stick to Netlink for changes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah but the whole hey, 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 please stand up. Yeah, the problem with SysFS is that yeah. uh, you can't really do multi-part operations. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Unless from but user space. Maybe just for reading stuff. For yeah. reading stuff, it's handy, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, another thing that we haven't gone into is what queue properties should be exposed. I mean, do you want to be able to get and set the number of hardware descriptors for a queue, for example? Is that something we want to expose? Yes. I think we already have tool stuff for that. Yeah. If we don't, we want it. <laughs> yeah. uh, some idea that uh, Jacob had that, you know, he said, well, he wants not be in the interface as well. Oh. He didn't manage to convince me, but that's probably because I'm thick-headed. But, uh, you know, I don't see it being used anywhere else. But uh, he wanted specifically not be an area queue. And we'll see where, where that goes. But the proposal so far is just area queue and nothing else. Uh, do we, at some later stage, support virtual queues? Because if you create a program that is going to consume 256 queues and allocate that, you want it to be able to run on any hardware, even if the hardware only has 32 queues, I guess. Because otherwise it doesn't abstract as well. But, or you can build this in user space, of course. Right? That's another option. Uh, and yeah, what to call the queue manager? That's a good question. It's the most important one. Sorry? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, next steps. This is the, okay. We're gonna... uh, I'm a little bit confused with the term queue because that's you why we do don't want it called queue manager. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we have various types of queue inside the software, the hardware. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was thinking about shapers, and we have shapers in queue disk, and yeah. we have those shapers, and how do yeah. we provide the, the full image to the customer? It's becoming quite complicated. Yes. So um, for the descriptor count case, I think it makes sense because um, you might have a situation where um, the hardware receive ring um, might get, um, might be for example, bigger than the fill ring um, from the AFXDP so that you won't ever fill the um, hardware receive ring, and it would be constantly scheduling NAPI just to get, um, just to fulfill the receive hardware ring. So um, um, when you are doing the allocation for the AFXDP queues, um, they should be um, the same as um, AFXDP fill ring size. Oh, okay, right? got it because um, we had that situation where 
um, we changed in the ice driver um, the count of the receive um, queue and it was um, longer than the um, filtering so the NAPI was constantly scheduled. The question then is, is, is that through that you said the ETH tool interface that will do a new Netlink interface with this, or is it through this? I, I don't know. Can you elaborate about the Mike Villan case on your previous slide? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was thinking there's, there's uh, this Mac VLAN where you can actually uh, get a real queue exported to the Mac VLAN, a real hardware queue. And could you tie this into that to actually allocate that queue on demand? I think, is it John, John here? Yeah, you're here. Didn't you do that? But then if you do that, uh, maybe you want multiple queues to have a reserve side or scaling yeah, RSS. Yeah. So how yeah. you deal with that? Uh, I also ha have one more comment. Uh, so the current uh, API for queues is very limited. That's why uh, we are doing all of those stuff. And uh, we probably will not be able to keep backward compatibility in some places. Uh, even if we try, uh, there might be some cases where we are just unable to preserve the old interfaces. Uh, because they won't do the new stuff we need. One of the examples uh, I saw uh, in the slides is, for example, the AFXDP bind API. Um, if we try to support the bind call with a single QID, uh, Magnus suggests to pick uh, the corresponding TXQ according to the, uh, to the IRQ number, but uh, that's actually also challenging because uh, we can have many of them. Yes. Yeah. So Isn't that's, that what that's we're true doing today already now? today. We have many of them and we just pick Yeah, one. yeah. how we deal with it today is we have only one of them that is uh, AFXDP TXQ uh, in the channel. And if we just uh, switch to some generic queue manager framework that uh, creates uh, five TXQs, uh, we cannot just pick some of them as uh, AFXDP queues. So wh why I'm talking about this is uh, the main question, uh, if it's acceptable to uh, break such an APIs uh, in order to move uh, further, uh, because you I think if we don't do it uh, in several um, places, then we will be stuck forever with old uh, dinosaur interfaces that will not allow us to move further. Wouldn't you need to use the new Netlink alloc interfaces to even get into that situation? I may, for example, use uh, the Netlink, the Netlink interface, and then someone goes to a deprecated CCFS and tries to change yeah. something there. Two, two applications that use two different interfaces. I think that's why it's so urgent that we fix this as fast as possible <laughs> yeah. so there's less yeah. of those situations. I think we have to just say that if you start using the Netlink queue alloc, then you're in this new world, and that's the only kind of queue semantic we support. I think that's like, we have to yeah. put the line somewhere. And like, isn't it also a case of if we can support the old one without? That would be using, yeah. preferred, but if we can't, this is the demarcation line. That's my opinion. But right. I, I don't see the line for AFXDP, for example. We already have some interface um, with a single uh, queue bind. Uh, but so it, if, it, if we introduce the queue manager and, for example, some driver that supports it, does it mean that this driver will not support a single parameter bind anymore? The, the, sh the configuration of the queues by the driver without using any of the Netlink interfaces should be identical to what you get right now. 
And you would have to explicitly turn this queue manager thing on to allocate queues in a different way, I would suppose, if you want to do something like that. Yeah, so keep the defaults. Something the like same. that, yeah. 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 There are a lot of dependencies, so it's like, is the queue manager enabled? Does the device support the new queue allocation schemes? Therefore, the queue manager would use it. And do we have applications that use the old queue selection mechanism for AFXDPs? Like, they're all interconnected. It looks like we're trying to preserve all the possible APIs, and we will have an over-engineered system. I think so. I will have IPv6. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's definitely something we should take into consideration. I think I have time for one more question. Hey, I had one more slide, but that doesn't okay, matter. Okay, so just one more question is better. So <laughs> these more. are just the next. He time. says one more question is better. <laughs> uh, my take on this, uh, like first observation, uh, when you've been talking that if tool can change the queues, it's not only changing the queues, it's changing the RSS. So uh, whereas in a new API you're saying, well, I'm allocating the queue, but you're saying nothing about RSS. So yes. I think to me this new API for allocation to allocation queues need to come with, well, corresponding RSS oh, configuration yeah. and everything else. Because mm -hmm. especially like at least to address the current limitations we have already in RSS where there is only one spring, whereas hardware actually supports multi-spray and stuff where we can match and then spray to multiple queues. And I don't see, if it's part of this API, somehow you didn't mention on the slide. So no, that's my only No, ex comment. actually, yeah, that was one of the things to say, let's make it simple not to consider that at this point in time. But I, you're right, it is. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah we, but we also. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. but we also want to, yeah, improve an RSS with this interface to sort of get better programmability of steering. So if, if, if RSS, then what about n-tuple filtering and any other queue selection mechanisms that yes, we have? Yes, exactly. We want it all. We, we need the n-tuple stuff to work, right? Because we want to yeah. be able to direct traffic using yes. hardware filters and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's something else to take into consideration. Yeah. Yes. It just becomes really big. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but, what, but once we have an interface to sort of refer to this is a queue, we can then use that identifier that to program the hardware Other steering of stuff. The packets into that queue yeah. once we can identify it and yeah. refer to it. OK, let's stop while we're ahead before new problems get discovered. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Magnus, very much. Thanks.